Hello everyone and welcome to the next section in the CMG tutorial on CMOST. So in the last tutorial we learned how to do a sensitivity analysis and basically we got to this stage over here where we have an ability to use the proxy functions to make predictions of what will be the oil or gas uh, production in the future uh, given the different parameters. So that is what we got out of the sensitivity analysis. And what we see here, for example, is uh, if we look at this uh, RBF prediction utility, if I go and change the horizontal permeability, my prediction of uh, gas oil production is going to change over time. Now, if we noticed in the last tutorial, we also had the field history data. And what we want to know in this tutorial is, well, what, how when I change these reservoir parameters, how does what parameters will give me the data that I actually recorded in the field. And that will let me know and have a better idea of what are, for example, the porosity, the permeability, the reservoir properties I would like to know. And I would like to know them so that in the future when I make decisions, for example, uh, how many stages to do in uh, a horizontal well, or what should be the pressure that I use for pumping, I can use these porosity and permeability parameters that match the data that I've recorded in the field. And this process is called history matching. And today's tutorial will be on how to do the history matching. So let us go ahead. For this tutorial, you need to have done the previous one. So if you haven't done the CMOS uh, tutorial one, then you need to go back and do it so that you get to this stage. Okay, and once you get here, you can go into the study manager. And you're gonna go into tight oil sensitivity analysis, and you're going to copy it. And I think you can go click on it here and click on copy. Great. You're going to copy and rename. And I'm going to call this set of sensitivity analysis SAHM. And I call it two because I actually already have our tutorial running right now so we can get the results quicker. Okay. So I just copied it. And there we go. I'm going to go and open our copy. First thing I'm going to point out is that over here we have already the field history data from the previous tutorial. So you don't need to go and import that. And this data is categorized into different things like uh, how much oil, how much gas is produced that was recorded in the field. So therefore we do not need to uh, you know, import that in or categorize the data into different things. And that, following on that, I'm gonna go and change the objective function for this history matching project. So I'm going to go here, history match quality, and I'm going to go put different things that I would like to history match. So for example, I would like to go and make sure that the prediction that I have regarding the uh, amount of oil produced is going to match the, the real oil production measurements. So I got cumulative oil error. Okay, well, stop typing, that's fine. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert the data from the prediction that is uh, from the horizontal well and the cumulative oil error. Go click here on cumulative oil. And what this will do is it will go into the field history file, search for the cumulative oil value, then it will go to your prediction, the cumulative oil, and it will see what the error is between the prediction and the truth. And then it will use this error to go and optimize um, the values until it reaches a low error. But we're gonna make this a joint error from several things. So not only do we're interested in cumulative oil matching, we're also interested in several different targets matching. So cumulative oil, cumulative gas, perfect. And add here, gas. And let's add one more, and that is the gas oil ratio. So GOR, error, perfect. And just follow along with these steps. Uh, oh, there we go. Excellent. Now the next thing that we have to do is in the engine settings. Last settings we had was a sensitivity analysis. And now we have to change it into history matching. And we are going to choose the global objective function and to global history matching error, which is what we just defined, and we would like to minimize that. Here you can see there's different engines for how you do the optimization. So you can see you do random brute force, you can do Latin hypercube, uh, PSO, a particle storm optimization, 
uh, we're going to choose the, the default uh, CMG optimizer. And this optimizer will change the values based on the error, try to make it lower, minimize it. Perfect. So, you know, this CMG is set up in a very simple fashion for doing history matching. So that's it. You guys are actually done setting up. This is a pretty quick tutorial. So we look here. Uh, there are 70 experiments, and these are waiting to be reprocessed. So the moment we click on run, it's going to reprocess all of these in order to calculate the error between these predictions that we've already done and um, the field history data. It's also going to go and make more runs so that um, it can um, minimize the error even more. So and here, you just have to click on OK and choose your um, different schedulers and go. And what we see here, it's running very quickly. Why? Because it's just reprocessing that old data. So 70 of these are going to go pretty quick because that doesn't have to run anything new. It just has to do some calculations. And that is great. OK. Now I'm actually going to try and stop this in a moment because I already have a version of this running. So there is no need to have um, to running. And let's go look at the results that are ready from a previous run of this tutorial. And I'm going to kill these jobs. Perfect. So let's go look over here. And I'm actually going to go to the control center first. And what we see here is that we previously had 70 random simulations. And you see that the global error of the history matching goes up and down because this is random. There's no optimizing algorithm. Once you go beyond that, we can see that it starts going down kind of plateaus over here. But in general, the optimizer is doing a good job in choosing the values, which give low, um, low errors between the truth. And you can see it's actually quite close to zero, so there's really not much for it to go down in terms of uh, mismatch. Okay, so we can see that the optimizer is doing a good job. Now, if we take a closer look at that over here, we go into the results analysis observers. Here, for example, cumulative gas. And we say, wow, there is at least one run, which is the optimal solution, which does a pretty good match for the cumulative gas. Let's look at the cumulative oil. Again, a very, very close match for the optimal solution. Gas oil ratio, same, same. We can see it follows. Uh, this field, field history fairly closely. So that's excellent. Now we want to know, well, what are the parameters that led to this excellent match or to other excellent matches in this area? And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go into the experiment table. Um, and I'm going to go here and move this all the way to the right. And I'm going to look for optimal. Okay. Actually, a better way of doing it would even going to go and look here, let me move this at the global history matching error. Okay, and then I'm going to put it in the other direction. Oh, actually, let's go to the top. Okay, now we see here the lowest. Now these have no solutions yet, so they don't have a lowest. But if we look here at the lowest one that was so far calculated, has the following values. You can go here and you can. You can look how many layers down, how many layers up, what is the horizontal permeability, the vertical permeability, and the KVKH ratio that have led to this very good match with the data. Now, if you want to keep your options open, you can also see, okay, so the match was pretty good in this one, but it's also not so bad on these ones that are right below it, that have slightly lower error. And then you can use these values uh, that you get of the porosity and the permeability, and you can use those for optimization. And you can see all these top values that have somewhat similar low uh, errors. And, and these are the ones that you can choose to use for further optimization schemes. And that is beautiful. Great. So thank you so much for listening in on this tutorial. And I hope it will help you in all of your projects.